Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Howard Wani and in today's video, I wanted to take you guys on a little adventure as I go through vintage or secondhand bookshops as well as contemporary bookshops in Perth, Western Australia. I then want to show you guys some of the books that I bought and then talk about a reading challenge that I wanted to do for the rest of 2021. Hope you enjoy the video!
Hey guys, it's been a minute since I've been in front of the camera. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed watching my videos that I took when I went from bookshop to bookshop. Uh, obviously, as you saw in the video, I went to some, I guess, vintage bookshops where they sold more like vintage or secondhand books. And then I also went to some contemporary bookshops like the Beaufort Street Books, but also Planet Books as well. Planet Books is probably one of my favorites because I'm nocturnal um, and it's just a fantastic place. Anyway, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, my book haul, uh, some of the books that I ended up getting, but also uh, a little bit about my ideas about a reading challenge that I wanted to set for myself. Uh, and if you wanted to participate within it as well, that would be great. Uh, but yeah, anyway. So firstly, I wanted to talk a bit about the books that I ended up getting from the first bookshop. Um, so these are the two books that I ended up getting. One of them was Far From the Madding Crowd, which is a Thomas Hardy book, and the other one was Villette, uh, which is written by Charlotte Bronte. So I will be doing a close-up of the book, so Far From the Madding Crowd, which is uh, written by Thomas Hardy. This book was actually made in 1921 by Macmillan & Co Limited. This book was actually printed on what I believe is sort of like, it feels like acid-free paper, but it's super thin and I really like it. Um, it's really small as well, which is nice, like it's just as big as my hand is. Um, and if you know me at all, you know that I tend to read on the train or the bus, so I tend to prefer smaller books like this, so I'm really glad that the size of this is really quite small. The other book that I ended up getting was Villette by Charlotte Bronte. This is a Zodiac Press book which was published by Chateau and Windus in London, so it's Oxford University Press. Uh, I have actually been collecting these books for a while now, um, and I'll get into one of the reasons why I started getting into collecting the Zodiac Press books. This book happens to be a first edition. It was printed in 1948. Uh, as you can see, it is part of a collection known as the Zodiac Press, which I started collecting uh, because of my friend Victoria, and I'll actually go into one of the books that I actually bought from her Etsy shop. Uh, so this book is in pretty good condition, I would say. Uh, the spine has yellowed a little bit over time, but that's to be expected for what is what essentially is a 70-year-old book. Uh, but the front of it is still in really good condition, and so is the back of it. The pages have yellowed over time, but personally, I happen to like that look because I feel like it gives a bit more of a vintage vibe to the book. and makes it a little bit more of a sort of old-fashioned experience when I do read these books. There's something really special to me about collecting vintage books, especially if you're reading some of the classics like the Bronte sisters, Austen or Hardy. It just makes the experience so much more, I don't know, just beautiful because you're you're holding these classic books with the knowledge that these tales have lasted over time and you've got these books that have also lasted over time. Uh, but yeah, anyway, just a romantic notion when it comes to vintage books, but I do love or have started loving uh, collecting them. So. I also have my friend Victoria to blame for that, and she's probably sitting there feeling very smug for herself, um, and rightly so. From the second shop that I went to, which was Beaufort Street Books, I actually bought, again, two books. Um, so this is more of a contemporary bookshop as opposed to a vintage or secondhand bookshop. So I got two books from there. I got Haruki Murakami's uh, Norwegian Wood, and I got uh, Kim Ji-young, born 1982, which was written by Cho Nam-ju. I got these books because one of my favorite book YouTubers, Jack Edwards, actually recommended these. Um, so these are both written by Asian authors. So this book was actually recommended by my friend Lucinda, who actually picked this book up, I think, I want to say about two months ago. Anyway, I started reading it. I quite like um, the style of the writing and the way that this author personifies uh, young people, because sometimes I feel like some authors tend to personify young people and you can tell that this person has absolutely no idea what young people are like nowadays and they tend to portray them in, in a way that isn't really true or representative, but I feel like Murakami so far as I've gotten through this book is doing a pretty good job of that. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is that Murakami has been criticized for the way that he has 
represented women, but I haven't come across that yet, so I can't comment on that. But a book that has been praised for the way that it represents women is Kim Ji Yong. Kim Ji Yong, born 1982, talks about the life story of one young woman born at the end of the 20th century, uh, which raises questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that are relevant to us all. So I'm really excited to read this book, especially after I read this book. Uh, to kind of compare but I mean these books are both well loved for different reasons so I will let you guys know what I think about both of these. The book that I ended up picking up from Planet Books is Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar uh, which is more of a modern classic. So working as an intern for a New York fashion magazine in the summer of 1953, Esther Greenwood is on the brink of her future yet she is also on the edge of a darkness that makes her world increasingly unreal. Esther's vision of the world shimmers and shifts, day-to-day -day living in the sultry city, her her crazed men friends, the hot dinner dances. Um, so I have heard that this is sort of autobiographical for Sylvia Plath, um, so I'm quite interested in getting into this. I know that my friend Ariel um, has read another one of Sylvia Plath's novel. I'm gonna say, oh, I wanna say that my friend Ariel has read the novel Ariel. I'm pretty sure, which um, I'm pretty sure is a book that she had to pick up for her English degree. Um, but yeah, anyway. Knowing her, she's probably also read this because my friend Ariel is an avid reader and chances are if there's a book that I've picked up, Ariel has read it as well. So I wanted to end this video by saying that I've been wanting to do a reading challenge for a long time. I haven't really properly finished a book in, I want to say, over a year. The last book that I can remember finishing was actually The um, Latte Factor, which is a book, a very short book on investments, which was a good book, but um, it's not really a book book by my standards. It's more self-development and finances as opposed to an actual like fiction book. So I have decided or I have set myself a goal of wanting to read 20 books by the end of 2021. So that roughly translates to about sort of two to three books per month. And I have decided to read one contemporary book and one classic book at least per month. I know that we're halfway through June, so I have started on some of these books and I have started on this challenge at the start of June. Uh, but moving forward, I was hoping to sort of give you updates on how my reading is going and tell you the books that I'm hoping to read for that month. And in a way, it kind of keeps me accountable. So if you wanted to join this uh, reading challenge of reading, you know, one contemporary book and one classic book, uh, definitely comment down below and tell me what books you're planning to read this month. So the books that I'm planning to read for this month, I actually have four, but one of them is on my Kindle. Uh, so I'm reading two classics and two contemporary books. The first one is Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. I'm actually reading this book with my friend Victoria. It is probably one of the most stunning books I have ever held in my hands. I have started collecting these books specifically because I really like the way that it's been constructed. Uh, it feels really good in my hands and for some reason the way that they have sort of um, outlined everything, the way that it feels in my hands, it just makes me really want to read classic books. I can't really explain it. Maybe it's also because it's attached to my friend Victoria. I purchased this from her Etsy shop, which I will link down below. Uh, but this Zodiac Press book is from 1955 and it was published by Chateau and Windus and this is a second impression. I'm almost halfway through the book at the moment. I'm actually at chapter 14. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is my goal is to finish Withering Heights. The other book that I decided to pick up was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Um, so I have read a few Jane Austen books in the past, but I've never read Northanger Abbey. Uh, I did read that Northanger Abbey was actually the first book that she wrote, but it was the one that was last published. I'm sort of 20% of the way through at the moment. All I can say is that this book is really funny. If you really liked the style of Emma, you'll likely really enjoy Northanger Abbey as well because it's got um, sort of a similar sense of humor. Catherine Moreland, who is the main character or heroine, is quite naive, but she does get up to some shenanigans and it's it's really funny. I'd actually really, I'd actually really recommend that you start off with this one as opposed to Pride and Prejudice or Sense and Sensibility. Uh, if you wanted to start reading Austen, I think that Northanger Abbey is quite funny uh, and it's quite yeah, it's quite light, I'd say. You, you'd get through it pretty quickly, I reckon. Quick side note, anyone who's interested in getting these books, I'd highly recommend checking out janeaustenbooks.net. I'll have them linked in the description box below because the books that I got from them were immaculate, uh, like fantastic condition considering they're like 30 years old. The other two books I'm planning to finish this month is Norwegian Wood by Murakami and Midnight Library as well. 
but yeah let me know down below if you're planning on doing this reading challenge with me you can always do a variation of it if you happen to be really busy you could just read one book a month let me know if you are doing a reading challenge i know that my friend ariel does a reading challenge every single year i'm pretty sure that this year she's planning to read 30 books which i think is just incredible uh, but yeah if you're doing your reading challenge comment down below and let me know how many books you're planning to read for 2021 if you aren't doing a reading challenge then i challenge you to do this challenge with me i was thinking that maybe in two weeks time i'll let you guys know how i'm going with this um, so this may not necessarily be a tuesday upload it might be a friday upload because i want it to be different from the stream of videos that i'm going to be posting i'll do a quick update to let you guys know uh, how i went on with the books but then let you know what books i'm planning to read for the month of july if you liked this video be sure to subscribe for more content on sustainable and mindful living and i guess book videos are going to be a monthly thing for me now i hope that you enjoyed this casual laid-back style type video be sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below what books you're planning to read for this month and i'll see you guys in my next video Oh my god. So. <coughs> Why can't I be one of those delicate girls that sneezes like it's you? When I sneeze, I blow down trees. Okay, collect to yourself. Ridwani, collect to yourself. Okay. You're not making me tea? I'm just washing the glass. Oh. But tea would be nice. Darling. Yes? What? That's a lot. Turn the other one on? Maybe we should have them both on. That's fine. Okay. I feel like I look like very much an aspiring YouTuber because I've got a candle in the background yeah. and I've got a plant and now I've got some books. Could I be more self-aware? You're talking to me on camera. Talking to you and the camera. If you hear that, you hear if you hear me go, go, go. That's your signal to to come here, because I need help. Okay. Please be yourself. Extremely. <laughs> <laughs>